Ladies and gentlemen, we have uniforms. A few months after the Louis B. Nunn Center for Oral History at the UK Libraries launched its From Combat to Kentucky Oral History project, I was approached by Herman Farrell, a theater department professor who was interested in developing a documentary drama concerning student veterans. I immediately said yes. I met with Tony Dodson at the Veterans Resource Center and uh, he immediately informed me that uh, Doug Boyd at the Oral History Center was putting together this project known as A Combat to Kentucky. So I went over and I met with Doug and within a few moments of uh, sitting with Doug, he said, sure, I would love to collaborate. I went back to my theater history class, uh, staging history class, and we were off and running with uh, bringing it home. The Nunn Center has a long tradition of documenting veteran stories. For the From Combat to Kentucky project, we're working in coordination with Tony Dodson, director of the Veterans Resource Center, to conduct video recorded interviews of currently enrolled students who fought in our Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. Right from the beginning, I knew that From Combat to Kentucky was an exceptional project. The stories being told by these young men and women were riveting. Well, something that uh, we really didn't anticipate was the therapeutic effect that the interviews had on the veterans that participated. It was an opportunity basically for these young men and women to come in and take that ruck off their back, put it on the floor, and unload it one memory at a time, or to dump it all out at once, but to get it all out and off their shoulders. This seemingly simple interview for history's sake became something much more and became uh, the first part in a healing process, if you will. And I really don't think we could have accomplished that without having a combat veteran like Tyler Gayhart conducting the interviews. Well, the first time we, we watched the videos, we were all blown away by each of the five individual veterans and um, their experiences. For many of us, we were aware of, of uh, what was going on in the war. Uh, many of the, some of the students admitted that they didn't really pay much attention to what was happening in Iraq and Afghanistan. But after sitting and listening to these five veterans, each one of them speaking for two hours, um, we were all blown away by the, uh, by the stories and by their experiences. Boot camp, well, I went to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, Fort Lost in the Woods, that's what everybody calls it. Um, uh, I had a great drill sergeant. I don't know if everybody tells you that, but I love my drill sergeant. I love my drill sergeant. Uh, I think he was an E5, but he was like real hard on us if we did something wrong, and he, um, uh, and we exercised. He was an exercise buff, so, uh, we exercised all the time, but uh, he didn't just smoke us for no reason. Uh, uh, smoke us, I, I should probably define that. Uh, he didn't make us do all sorts of uh, crazy exercises for hours on end for no reason. As we sat and watched these videos, we could see how these veterans were willing to open themselves up to um, Tyler Gayhart and to uh, um, tell their stories. We weren't so sure that that would have happened if we were the ones doing the interviews. And we've learned subsequently that that is probably true, that many of these uh, veterans said that they probably would have only told these stories to Tyler because he was a fellow veteran. We had some of the veterans come in and talk to us, notably Nathan Noble, who um, was a little uh, concerned about, about the project and how we'd go about it. And he said to us, make sure that you don't um, do any interpretation. And we, of course, knew that we were going to be interpreting um, their lives, actors playing real people, there would be some interpretation. But we understood what he was saying, which was not to go beyond sort of the emotional content that was already there in the videos. And so in many ways that was our guide um, and our sort of governing principle as we, as we proceeded through um, the development of the project. It looks like it does in the movies, you know, and it, it just, you can see it just hit outside and it just throws debris all over the side of the window and uh, you're sitting in the back just helpless, you know, but you know, it's, it's exciting, it was an adrenaline rush. It's though. an adrenaline rush though, it, you know, I, I, I was sitting there and I was like, man, you know, this is pretty intense, but you know, the gunner's up there firing and we're chaining and, and handing them ammo and, you know, we look out the window and we see these firing positions, we see where these RPGs or rocket propelled grenades are coming in from and it's, it's just like a video game, you know? I had built a rapport with these veterans. They had trusted me with their stories and for them to be taped and for the Oral History Center to record them. And when Doug and Tony and Herman had approached me about this theatrical production, we were immediately fearful that their stories were gonna be taken out of context. We had the same concerns and I guess our worst fear was that the veterans might uh, not be happy with our uh, uh, portrayal of their lives. After seeing the play, all my fears and doubts were immediately alleviated. Herman's class portrayed the student veterans with honesty and respect. You know, I swore the Marine Corps ruined the outdoors for me. 
because it's just cold, either hot and uncomfortable or cold and uncomfortable. And either hot, hot and wet and uncomfortable or cold and wet and uncomfortable. So I really kind of got, when I first got out of the Marine Corps, I got away from going outside. When I first got out of the Marine Corps, I really outside. stopped uh, going outside and doing outside activities. But um, now I do outside activities all the time because uh, it just reminds me of being back in the Marine Corps. In the beginning, we, we wanted the audience to um, understand that these students were portraying veterans and they weren't actually watching veterans. And so what they're witnessing is sort of a classroom rehearsal um, um, setting. And so it begins with them just reading the script um, and beginning to sort of embody the characters. The second room is the boot camp room. And, and there we also, we wanted to sort of change the experience for the audience. We move the audience from the classroom setting and we walk them into this other space. And in that other space, they were required to stand throughout the whole um, um, scene, um, which was known as boot camp. And so we had the chance for um, the um, actors to work out um, during this boot camp sequence, uh, climbing ropes and doing doing chin-ups and what have you. But the key thing here was that the audience was standing there right, right with them and that they had to sort of experience what it's like, briefly, uh, experience what it's like in, in boot camp. The third area is what is known as the deployment area. We wanted to sort of like give them a sense of going in country. The idea is that we wanted to, first of all, tear down um, um, the dividing walls between one space and the other, these china silks, and we had them ritually torn down and then um, uh, brought across um, the, the playing area. And then we invited the audience um, to go and sit um, on the floor um, in, a, in an area uh, where the actors could perform um, between them and around them. We had a um, uh, sort of a clover leaf uh, uh, type of seating on the floor with um, you know, mats organized as it, in sort of a clover leaf fashion, so that the audience, so the audience would be sitting in one in one position, and then the actors would be moving uh, around them. And then at the end, we return. Um, we call it the Oprah sequence. It's basically we, they go back to not the classroom, but they go back to a place where they're being interviewed, and they're talking about their transition, the longer transition um, from um, um, from their deployment into. Um, uh, quote unquote normal life back in America and certainly back in Kentucky. This unique interdisciplinary collaboration between an oral history center and a research library, a veterans resource center, and a theater department should serve as a model for other universities and colleges across the country, perhaps even throughout the world. What we accomplished here can be replicated if there's a commitment to preserving and honoring the stories of our student veterans. What we wanted to do was to bridge the gap between the the military community and the civilian community. And then once we came up with that, that underlying principle, then it was um, relatively easy to, to pick and choose and, and determine what would go in and what would be left by the wayside. The Bringing It Home Voices of Student Veterans production was hugely successful in my mind because it told the story of our student veterans both honestly and without any political agenda. And it gave the civilians in the audience a rare opportunity to look inside our military and see how our military personnel are treated and how they're being affected both at war and at home. And also it gave our military, our veterans, um, comfort, if you will, in knowing that there are people on campus that actually care enough to be in that audience. And more notably that there are professionals on campus, such as the professionals in the oral history department and in the fine arts department, who are able to take their stories treat them with both dignity and respect, and create a very powerful and emotionally gut-wrenching theatrical production. I think the production overall addresses our veterans on many levels, but most importantly, I think it says, welcome home.